Hi, this is Michael Shin from Evolve Electrical, and today I'm going to walk you through the new hanger features and enhancements for Evolve Electrical 5.0 that is now available. So on your screen here, you can see I've got a simple little electrical layout system we have here. And what we're going to do is actually walk through all the new hanger commands that, we, that we've added. So originally with our hanger commands, it was one single button called hanger placement. You click onto the commands and then it'll prompt you for a window selection and then what your settings would be. What we've did with this release is we've now set it up so that we can now, under the settings window, we have our hanger placement settings. This is a familiar UI that from, from past users from 4.2 and back that have seen our hanger command, but what we've done now is we've added the, the ability to create a placement profile. This way you can save that, those settings, and then when you go to place your hangers, pick what profile to work with. So in this case, I'll just, we'll just delete this one for fun here. We're going to click on to new placement profile. I'll say, all right, this is going to be six foot spacing, uh, spacing, hanging, uh, uh, let's say resting on uh, struts, whatever you want to call it. So now I have the ability to here now set and set what my trapeze spacing is going to be every, maybe every eight feet. Let's put that to every six feet distance from a bend, and then what's your overall rack width rounding? Round it to the nearest two, four, six, or foot. If you put it to zero, it's not gonna do any overall rack width rounding. Next, we have our mineral act tab. So with Evolve 5.0, we now have the ability to automatically place mineral act hangers uh, with, with our hanger placement command. Previously, it was just trapeze only. Uh, what is your hardware size? Three eighths. And then what is the maximum conduit size for your for your mineral like hangers? Well, I'll just grab uh, three inches for the time being. So if it gets greater than three inches, it will then revert it back to a, a, a trapeze for that single hanger. Uh, family settings. This is very familiar from uh, our past uh, hanger uh, hanger UI. Uh, auto detect. You, this basically tells you you do not need to pick what hanger to use. The tool is going to automatically detect if it's a single tier, two tier, three tier, four tier. Uh, what is your default upper attachment, uh, beam camp, uh, clamp, blue banger, embed, or a rod coupling? Your strut configuration. This is where it said resting on, str uh, on strut. Actually, let me rename that on strut. Uh, so that way it's sitting on top of the strut, or is it hanging from the bottom of the strut? What is your strut size for each of the different tiers? And then for each tier, you have your standard inverted or a back-to-back -back, back strut. Your rod configuration, so your gap distance, what is the outside conduit to that nearest rod? What's that spacing going to be? Say two inches. Uh, beam offset, so we are detecting if uh, there is structural framing uh, in the model in, in, or in your linked model. So if the rod were to hit an actual beam, what do you want the tool to do? So it's going to automatically move the rod over and find the edge of that top of the edge of that beam. And then from there, from there you can say, all right, keep it at the, at the beam and say zero inches or go, uh, go a half or maybe a quarter inch uh, off the side and, re and convert that upper rod to a beam clamp or have it or don't go one inch off and it's gonna keep it as a blue banger. So for today's demo, I'm gonna put this to maybe a quarter of an inch. We'll use beam clamp. Center rod, never on, always on, or if the racket seeds a certain width, turn the center rod automatically on. And where's our default uh, hardware size will be 3 8 The next uh, cool feature, that, or the game-changing feature that we have for hanger placement is the automatic collision adjustment and avoidance. Basically what it's gonna do as it places these hangers, it's going to recognize that that rod is automatically hitting uh, a linked model or a duck or a pipe and then move that rod or that hanger based on these rules. So you have a tolerance here. So what is the rod diameter? Add an additional tolerance onto that. So maybe add an extra inch or two inches uh, onto that rod to help give it basically find more clashes. Uh, what is the move interval? So if it's if it's gonna move this rack, how many how what is the move phases that it's gonna move along that on that rack? So you can say, all right, move it every six inches or so. Or move it every every one foot until it finds or, or clears a clash. What's the maximum amount of movement that it's allowed to do? Let's say, maybe, maybe make it th uh, three feet. Uh, your stretch interval, so this is now adjusting the width of the actual rack. 
what is that interval going to move? So move it at a two inch interval uh, uh, with adjustment. That way, uh, that way it's fun trying to find where the actual opening could be to avoid another trade. And what's the maximum amount of stretching that it can do? Three inches, four inches. And then the last option here is what is the maximum strut length? And what's the maximum width that, that, that these hangers can be? Uh, we have an option here for highlight immovable hangers, meaning that if a hanger could not, based on all these rules, could not find or move, uh, it will then highlight that actual hanger. Down here at the bottom is where you can pick what color you want to highlight it in your view. We also have a override distance from end to avoid a clash. This allows you to hear uh, set, so back in the beginning here, your distance from end, start one foot from the end of a conduit. Uh, if, you un if you check this, it'll, uh, it'll ignore that one foot rule uh, if it finds an optimal spot to actually do a, uh, to do a placement. Uh, regarding the preferences here, there's an option here for enable auto collision adjustments. This allows the software to basically run an array and find where the best optimal results for placement of your hangers. It's a great algorithm that we have behind the scenes to find the best optimal spot based on all of these rules where the hangers would go. The other option you have, if you want to turn that off, you're not getting the results you're looking for, we give you another option here where you have, you have control of how the hangers are going to be moving. Are the hangers going to move? If that doesn't work, then stretch the hanger out. Or do you want to stretch the hanger, basically adjust the width? If that doesn't work, then move the, the hanger along, along the, the rack. Or option number three, just don't adjust the width, slide the hanger, uh, uh, move the, the hanger along uh, that, that rack. Basically with the move back and stretch or stretch and move, we kind of call it internally in, in, inside here, uh, the hopscotch method, move in, move out, move in, move out, basically is that, is that method. Uh, so what you can do, if you, I recommend enable auto collision adjustments. It's going to run uh, our really cool uh, algorithm behind the scenes to find the best results for the hanger placement. If you're still not getting results you're looking for, you can turn that off and then you can control exactly how those hangers work. You can also uncheck this collision adjustments. That way it doesn't do any clash detection at all. You can make a different profile if you wanted to. That way it gives you all the controls as an end user. I'll click OK here. What I'm going to do for this demo, I've got some basic ductwork drawn inside of our model here. I just drew some ductwork just to cause some clashes. That way you can see the, these actual changes here. This will work with a linked Revit model. It currently does not work with a CAD background or an NWD, uh, a, coord a coordination model. So what we're going to do, you notice we have a new ribbon group here called supports. We have a hanger placement button. I'll click onto that. I'll window select this grouping of hangers here, click finish. Now this new, I, this new UI opens up where I can now pick what profile I want to, want to place these hangers with. So in this case, six foot spacing and they're resting on the strut. If you want to, right from here, you can actually access the settings window and they actually make any quick adjustments to uh, your hanger settings profile. Next, we have entire path, change of direction and single hanger. Existing functionality, uh, based on from past, uh, past uh, features or past uh, 4.2. The options tab, this is where you can now control where your rods are going up to. So the rods go into the nearest structure overhead, basically look at any linked models or any elements that are inside your model. Uh, note it, what it's looking for is floors and structural framing. Next option is distance below level, basically have the rods go up to the next level above. And then you can set additional, maybe go six inches below the level above. Linked model, this allows you to pick which linked model you want the actual rods to attach up to. So in this case, maybe look at only the structural model or a architectural model, whatever model you have in there. Uh, the key difference between linked model and near structure overhead is basically that. This allows you to pick which model to look for. Near structure overhead, it's going to look at all of the linked models. So it might, it might slow your processing time a little bit. That's where we threw in the linked model option or just go up to a reference plane. I'm going to use near structure overhead. Click OK. I'm now going to click down at the furthest end of our rack here. That tells the software what direction these, uh, these hangers are going to go in. So the tool now knows we're going to start from here, apply all of those rules along our run here and then place those hangers. 
working with our customers. And uh, we basically got these hangar families uh, being placed in some of the most complex models with our internal testing we've been doing between two to three hangers uh, per second uh, with the placement of these, hangar, of these hangers in a full BIM 360. Work sets enabled all the testing we've been doing internal with all of our customers. We're getting great feedback uh, from, our, from our end users. Uh, because of our end users, this is what's helping us get these, these features to be so fast and, and, and so accurate. Notice that it's now placed all those hangers, did about 40, 50 hangers pretty quick. Uh, it, it highlighted this section here, indicating for us that uh, it, it did not know what to do in this scenario. So it highlighted uh, those elements just in this view only. We have a clear clash button. I'll click onto that and that clears that clash in that view. Uh, as an example here, if I click onto this hanger, I'll show you the clash detection and avoidance edit that it's done for us automatically. We section box this little scenario here. So now I rotate this view. What it's done is it's done a lot of things here. One it has avoided the ductwork in this scenario. So it moved this rack all the way over following the stretching rules that are, that are applied. It also recognized that this rod here was probably going to hit this beam. It can't move any closer in. So it's going to move it to this edge of the beam. And then what is the offset value that it applied? So it applied a quarter inch value that I added onto it and then it's converted that to a beam clamp. What it's also done at the end is it has applied a overall trapeze width rounding. So it's four foot two. So I rounded to the nearest two inches. Uh, so therefore it's now rounded to the nearest two inches. A lot of cool stuff that it did for us there in our view automatically. You can see as I, as I move around in here, let's even go to maybe even a plan view in this scenario and show you how it has avoided uh, the pipe work. So if I click on to here, let's do some dimensioning. So you can see it was supposed to place these every six feet. It moved that hanger and avoided that one. So now from that point is the next one should be at six feet unless there's a clash. Yep, there would have been a clash. So it moved that over. Next one, this one should have been at six feet. Perfect. So that one stayed at six foot, but it just it adjusted the width for us. And then the next one here, let's grab this guy. This is the one that it highlighted. It didn't know what to do in this scenario because no matter what it did, if it moved it closer, it would have caused a clash uh, as well as potentially moving it or adjusting any of the widths. And then so on and so on. It, it basically kept placing and adjusting all the hangers for us automatically. Our ultimate goal with this is to get our hangers to be, be get all about say 90 to 95% of your hangers placed with this command. You now have all the control that you're looking for from an end user to come in and make any adjust, any uh, 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 additional adjustments uh, to your hangers. Maybe uh, throw in a center rod here, make, make whatever adjustments that you're looking for. But at least the initial placement was done fast and accurate and saved you a ton of time. So that's one of the big features that we have for 5.0 is the automatic placements and collision avoidance uh, of hangers. Again, it's looking at uh, floors and structural framing in your internal model, as well as any linked models. Uh, from a performance standpoint, if you have a ton of linked models, uh, you want to make sure things are running quickly and smooth. Uh, you can also turn off other links in your current view with the visibility graphics. So you go to visibility graphics, you'll see there's a probably a linked tab here. Turn only have on maybe the structural model. So therefore the tool will only see in your 3D view the structural framing model. That way you can control what what uh, what hangers it's actually uh, or or what trades it's actually avoiding. So maybe I just want to do a clash detect against ductwork. I can turn on just the ductwork model and maybe the structural model. However you want to do it, it's based on the visibility inside of that view. So that's all the features for uh, the hanger placement for 5.0. We've got a lot more coming down the pipeline. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, these new features.